Today I fucked up by telling a client her euthanized pet will be okay. I work at a vet clinic, and we just had a teen come in with her dad to euthanize her hedgehog. We had been caring for this pet for weeks as she declined, mainly due to age. And this girl was willing to do everything for her, but she finally conceded that it was time and so we made the arrangements. The deed was done and dad stayed behind to wrap things up while the daughter started to head outside. On her way out she says tearfully, well at least she's not suffering anymore, and my mind raced to respond. I was going through my mental list of kind words, it's going to be okay, she knows you loved her, that sort of thing, and somehow my brain jumbled a few and I ended up saying she's going to be okay. The worst thing is that she was out the door before I could correct her, at this point I just hope she didn't hear me. TL, doctor, after euthanizing her pet hedgehog. I tried to comfort the client as she walked out but my words got jumbled and I told her that her pet would be okay. Hey shit happens. Sometimes the brain is faster than the mouth. Personally I would have taken this as she's in a better place I wouldn't sweat it too much up. Oh I'm glad to hear that, I hope that's how she took it. Thank you, that helps. The human brain really does not hear and process every word you say, we take the words our brain picked up and then form them into a thought of meaning within the context. With the context being what it was she most likely, if she heard you, thinks you said, you will be okay. He brain would dismiss she in the original sentence. Don't beat yourself up, everyone does that kind of stuff, especially in emotionally charged moments. You were kind to her, the only part you should know or care about in your head and I guarantee that would be what mattered to her. I hope so. This really has been one of those I can't stop thinking about it moments but you're right, hopefully she just took the sentiment and not the literal words. I needed this, thank you. If they believe in heaven for pets, then her hedgehog will be fine. Don't be too hard on yourself, stuff happens and I'm sure both her and her dad will know you were trying to be comforting. When I got the call that my horse hadn't made it through surgery I don't remember anything anyone said after the TBH so I doubt it'll stick with the teen. I wouldn't be too hard on yourself. Years ago, before I was working at a clinic myself, I got that call when a kitten I rescued, dumped at the park I was working at, didn't survive her space surgery. I only remember bits of that conversation myself, so I hope you are right in this case too. I'm really sorry for the loss of your horse. Today I fucked up by being a stupid fucking idiot and not realizing my boyfriend of two years was bi. I've been seeing this guy for almost two years, we can call him Michael. And I never realized he was bi. And I'm not a super religious close minded person either, I'm a pansexual female. Whenever we are outside and we see a cute guy, or a cute guy appears on Netflix, I always assume he's teasing me to see if I like him. I never took it seriously because he would point out good looking woman too. We both really enjoy window shopping. We both really like to joke with each other, and it turns out if you spend a majority of your relationships joking, your relationship is a joke. Michael does have a lot of, rainbow, rainbows and his outfit. But I never thought too much of it since we live in a really liberal place and I am part of the LGBTQ, so I assumed he feels like an ally. We never really talked about our sexuality much, and we both are fairly low libidos. I don't know why it just never came up. We only found out because last night Michael was on Facebook showing me pictures of his baseball team when he was in high school. He was telling me about each of them. When it got to this guy Tony, not real name, he told me he gives great hand jobs. I laughed and said, no shit he does. His hand is fucking huge. I bet he don't even have to go up and down and it will be enough for most guys. He laughed too, and it teased me about my hands being too small. Yeah I have hands the size of babies. My niece is 10 years old and her hands are the exact same as mine. Then he told me he misses him and his giant hands and I said yeah I miss all my high school friends too. And today while we ate dinner and watching Netflix, he told me he just found out Tony also moved to New York 
close to where we lived just by coincidence. He told me they reconnected and he wants to go over and watch Star Wars prequels together and maybe get another hand job. I thought he was referencing last night's joke told him sure. Tony live by himself so we thought he would be safe enough and said sure. Michael then said he promised he would only stay with hand jobs and blow jobs at most, he won't have penetrative sex at all, at least before he gets tested, he just really craves the touch of a man this few weeks. He promised me he loves me more than anything else and would not be any emotional cheating. At this point I finally fucking realized he wasn't kidding, and I somehow fucking didn't know he was bisexual the whole time. He questioned me about all the times he made references, and I thought he was making jokes all the time. Now we are both laughing on the couch, I can't believe how ridiculous it was. I am never going to live this down. Our relationship is fine but we need to communicate better. And yes he is still planning to go. TL, drive my boyfriend of almost two years was bisexual and I had an extremely dense brick for a brain. So you're just cool with your partner going to get a hand job from someone else? Different strokes for different folks, I guess. I love your pun and your username. Yeah I'm cool with it, different couples have different boundaries, and we discussed it when we started this relationship. And we were in a long distance relationship for a couple months so that kind of needed to happen. So, it's totally cool with you that your boyfriend is going to be sexually interacting with someone else? Not judging, just legitimately wondering how that doesn't screw with you. Well I wanted to say good communication and just talk about problems when they arise, but I can't really say that. I don't think it's an issue and if he do anything outside our agreed boundaries that's cheating and we will just break up and I could afford the rent on my own. You know how we buy people are always talking about being invisible? Tongue. Also this entire post I was mentally shortening his name to bike. I didn't realize I was bi for 16 years so it could have been worse. He literally said that he misses a former sexual partner while being with you and that his hands were better. That's so disrespectful. Did you never talk about former sexual experiences? Did he really keep that from you for two years? That's just very concerning to me. Today I fucked up by being so paranoid that I think I made my crush hate me. So this happened yesterday and it's still kinda going on today. So in December, I met this girl and we had a great time together. We would talk almost daily and it was just really nice. So I catch feelings for her and I think that she catches feelings for me too. She is currently studying for exams so she doesn't have a lot of time to check discord which is where we were talking. Now I have pretty bad trust issues and I don't do well with lonely so any time that she would take a long time to respond, I would become super paranoid and think that she was ignoring me. I told her as much before and she explained that she just doesn't have a lot of free time. So we carry on, but still every time that she takes a while to respond I still become just a complete wreck. So I told her again yesterday and that was when everything came crashing down. She said that I was being unfair on her. I only realized after the fact that I was being completely selfish and that I wasn't thinking about her at all on this. I apologized profusely but I don't think it will make a difference. This all happened yesterday afternoon and she hasn't messaged me since. I think I just threw away the best thing that I had by being a paranoid wreck. TL, doctor, I've been talking to this girl and got scared she was ignoring me when she would take a while to respond. I told her and she hasn't messaged me since. Update, she messaged me there a while back saying that she was willing to forgive me. After listening to everyone's comments, I decided that I need to work on myself. I figured that it would be better if we better if we didn't talk while I was doing that. So I told her that I have some serious issues that I need to work on and that I wanted some space and that after I had fixed myself we could try again. I want to thank everyone who commented as I would not have been able to realize this without them. As someone with the condition, is it possible you could have borderline personality disorder? This post could have been written by me back before I got effective therapy for sure. The mention of trust issues and spiraling from someone not responding even if your rational brain knows you shouldn't be upset has big BPD vibes for me. Thank you. I would never have even thought about that. I will certainly look into this.
I'm going to begin by saying I get it, and it really sucks to feel like you're not important to someone you like and are starting to care about. And now I'll tell you that I've blocked people for making demands of my time when we're in the beginning, feeling each other out stage of a potential relationship. I have huge demands on my time, and the fact that I'm messaging someone semi-regularly means I'm already making space for them in my life. I make a point of letting the other person know that I'm not ignoring them if I don't get back ASAP, I'm just super busy. And if that person then makes more demands of me anyway, I conclude the following, they don't believe me, they're arrogant and think they should be more of a priority than my responsibilities, or they're controlling. It's not anyone else's job to handle your feelings. I know it sucks, but I promise you that you can do this. Your worth is not dependent on whether or not someone likes you. Focus on finding something to do that enriches your life or helps you grow as a person rather than waiting for the next message. Best of luck to you. She may come back around. Don't worry yet. How long would she generally take to respond before the situation? Anywhere from 5 minutes to 6 hours roughly. Yeah this kind of paranoia will turn me off from someone very quickly. Even say, she is ignoring you and moving on, you telling her your feeling it act isn't going to, make her suddenly like you more. And telling her, gives off those desperate clingy vibes and makes someone who originally seemed stable and reliable and cool into a neurotic drama that is making the honeymoon phase a chore to look at. So you're going to get ghosted. Every time you feel those trust issues happening, keep it to yourself. It's self-sabotaging and insulting the next person you're meeting basically telling them you are starting off with thinking badly of them without knowing them. Thank you for your reply. I really do appreciate the insight from a perspective that I hadn't considered before. I know that I really need to work on myself regarding trusting people and that it doesn't help anyone. I will take your advice on board and hopefully I can avoid this situation in the future. I was once that girl. I genuinely liked the guy in all other aspects, but he just would not stop freaking out if I didn't respond straight away. Not in a violent way but in a soppy way. Like he was obsessed with me. It was so so creepy, too creepy. I told him it made me uncomfortable but he would not stop. Part of his problem was that he refused to turn his read receipts on which meant he couldn't see mine so he wouldn't know if I read the message or not, but refused to turn them on. I kinda saw that as a red flag. Like who are you running from? Long story short. I couldn't get past the creepiness of it all. It probably wouldn't have mattered at that point if he apologizes and tried to change his ways and all that. I just couldn't shake the creepiness of being that obsessed with someone you've only known for a few weeks slash months. This probably doesn't help you now, but I'm telling you because it's definitely something you need to work through, whatever insecurities you have that are causing it. It really doesn't matter how great you might be in maybe every other possible aspect of dating slash life because you're giving off serious stalker vibes with what you're doing. And when a guy is giving off serious stalker vibes like that it can make a girl feel so unsafe. It's scary. It's an instant run and get as fucking far as you can deal breaker. <laughs>